So uh, thanks again for everybody coming. And uh, now to part two of our presentation for extreme events. I have Charlie Slotkin from Wow Inc., otherwise known as uh, Charlie the, uh, the Wow Guru. Yeah. My title is Integrated Marketing Guru, but that's nothing like the Wow Guru. That's way better. <laughs> um, and Charlie's been uh, been doing this for, for 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 a long time, and is really one of the really one of the most foremost leaders in event technologies in the country. And um, you know, from the from the this, the digital, the largest. What is it? The largest. Um, right, right now, it's the largest, it's the highest resolution LED wall in, in the United States. With 10 million pixels, we'll talk about in a little bit. Yeah, in, in Chicago, right? Uh, Philadelphia. Oh, Philadelphia, I thought it was, okay. Um, and, uh, and Charlie's going to be talking about event technologies. Um, so, again, without any, any further dis uh, ado, I'll uh, turn the floor over to Charlie. And uh, why don't you, I'm looking forward to being wowed. Oh, cool. I hope so. Everybody um, else. So. Thank you all. I know it's, it's so hard to get people out physically. It's, it's rare. I have some friends and clients I've never physically seen in person, but we've been working together for 10 or 15 years remotely and, and via Skype and email and texting. So it's, it's actually great to have you know, real, real live people or maybe, maybe all holograms that are... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, some are holograms. I didn't want to tell you. Okay, that's <laughs> we all right. We tricked you, huh? <laughs> that's all right. Um, uh, Basically, you know, my mission really is to wow people. I, I, I wow, uh, I live to wow, and I wow to live. And, and because wowing people is just, it's a, it's a wondrous event. There's something playful and wondrous when you can get someone to go, wow, that's cool. You've, you've changed people's emotional um, connection with something. So I'm going to basically have like eight word slides, and then we're really going to look at a lot of case studies or solutions to problems. A lot of them aren't appropriate to you, but it gives you a chance to understand how we collectively think, try to think uh, reverse engineer from understanding, the, uh, to Praveen's point, what the audience is all about, what their mindset is about. And, and as we all know, everyone is so maxed out these days, you know, and between, between work and downsizing, where you have people, you know, doing what four people would have done five or ten years ago. Um, and the demands of family and having kids and commuting and the, uh, the constant um, communication with Blackberries and iPhones, etc. We live in a very crazy world. Um, and, and it really is, it's all content all the time anymore and it's harder and harder to capture people's attention. Um, and, it, and, and I think what we like to tr think we do is we, we want to capture their attention but we really want to tell a story. We want to tell, and, and the reason for storytelling is stories have beginning, middles, and ends, and they're easily remembered. You know, there's so much advertising and marketing out there that very often you look at, and you're not even sure who it's for, or you're, you don't even really connect with why it's there. You, you may laugh, you may cry, it may connect with you, but I think the storytelling has become a little bit of a lost art, and that's something we're trying to constantly reinvent or force people to really rethink a little bit. Um, you know, I think uh, you know, PowerPoint certainly has, has been one of the best things in communication, one of the worst things in communication for, for a lot of us. Um, but if you really want people's attention nowadays, you've got to wow them a little bit. You know, and wowing really is um, exceeding their expectations. You know, when you, you know, when you put on a PowerPoint presentation, you, know, you can watch people's minds start to switch off around the audience. Here's slide one, and it has 40 lines of text. <laughs> And all of a sudden, you have these people reading their slides and clicking through them, and you realize people just start shutting down. And, and if you really want to connect with people, especially in, these, in the rare opportunities that we're, we're collectively working towards where you're bringing people together physically to a trade show, to an event, to a conference, it's so hard to get them there. It's so hard, you know, they're jet lagged, they're, they're tired, it's expensive, they're really sometimes don't even want to be there anymore. The, the, the boondoggles are gone. There's no, there's no playing around too much. You're there and you're out. Um, but you really, you really want to sort of exceed their expectations and, and have them connect with you in a way that they couldn't do via an email or sending them an electronic file. And I, I personally, that's one of my biggest challenges in looking at a lot of content that, that I see out there is there's so many things that I see at trade shows and events and annual meetings and conferences and sales meetings that they could have sent them a PowerPoint and literally accomplished the same thing. There's no reason to, to get the head of a company and read his slides and walk through that. So they're really not making use of that, that rare face-to-face -face interaction. Um, and the wow, the wow factor is an emotional response. You know it when you have it. It's very, very clear. It's, not, uh, it's, it's, it's really not that measurable, but it's, it's very emotive. Um, 
And very f simple sometimes being creative is just doing the opposite of, of what's expected. So if everyone's doing really big, sometimes doing things that are real small and very precious are the way to go. If everyone's being doing, doing things in a square, maybe you should do things in, 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 in a round shape. And that's very often how we collectively think, where if someone says, I, I want this booth, this experience to be open and inviting, I'll sometimes do the opposite of that. We should have a, a narrow tunnel that everyone has to walk through with those cool little luminescent lights that kind of cycle through and guide you and navigate you through an experience. I sort of love doing the opposite of what everyone else is doing. Um, so I'm just going to walk you through some case studies. This is probably one of the, one of the, the, the coolest projects I've worked on in, in, in my career. But um, in Philadelphia at Comcast New Headquarters, they wanted to do something that was the ultimate wow factor. And we dealt directly with the owner of Comcast, Brian Roberts. And he wanted something over the top. And initially, they started off with this billboard for Comcast. And they wanted something that would promote Comcast and all Comcast all the time. And we came in and, and you know, through a national RFP process, won the bid by saying, you know what, that's what's expected. Let's do something unexpected. So we created this huge video wall. I'm just going to go forward for a second and we'll go back. Basically, everything that has a little bit of the, the, uh, the darker wood is, in fact, LED pixels. The same pixels you see in Times Square for the signs, but these pixels are very close together. They're four millimeters apart as opposed to 10 or 20 millimeters apart, meaning that if you have something that's uh, 30 feet by 100 feet, you have 10 million pixels. So you have five times the quality of HD, which means you're really photorealistic. <coughs> you, you, you really believe that that, that, that screen is, is reality. So we had a lot of fun with it. We created this, this cast of characters called Comcast, C-A-S-T. Um, and we, we had dancing numbers. And it really was done more, more of an art piece than it was as a self-promotional piece for Comcast. The great thing is there was some NASA satellite imagery where you had these huge files, you know, 8,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels that you can't show to anyone because if you put them on a high-def TV, you're only looking at you know, 1920 by 1080 or a couple, you know. So you really, we, we had a canvas that we could actually pr show people things they've never seen before at their native resolution. Um, this was a cool clock. Every hour on the hour, these gears come down out of space. Uh, we have these little characters come and sort of nudge them in place. It begins to tell the time, and then it goes away. Um, this is, we do a Christmas special each year. Each year, it's a different theme. And it's sort of become the go-to thing in Philadelphia. If you have family and you're there for Christmas and you have relatives in town, everyone goes there the same way they would, might go to, to uh, Rockefeller Center That's in New York. Yeah, 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 and it's open to the public because it's also the uh, the common entrance to the suburban train station. Uh -huh. So you can come in the lobby and then you can go down the circular staircase and the trains are there and there's a whole bunch of stores, etc. Um, this year we happened to do it in in 3D. So we created this very cool 10 million pixel canvas. And we basically, through some technology tricks, allowed it to be in 3D. So everyone got a pair of Comcast branded glasses. And it, was, it, was, it really was one of those wonderful, magical moments. Uh, and if you get a chance, if you're ever in Philadelphia, it is very cool. So these bezels here we, that we've mimicked for the woods are actually electronic. And you'll see in a second they will actually um, disappear at some point. But also it's a com it's first sort of combination of taking um, technology and architecture and really combining them right at the onset. So rather than, hey, we're going to build a building, what are we going to hang on the walls? It's kind of, how are we going to build a building that's a storytelling machine at the same time? So I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. And these are just some other examples. We're doing a lot of permanent installations uh, around New York City specifically right now, but this is at 1540 Broadway. But with seamless plasmas, you also create these very, very high resolution canvases. And when you have that high resolution, you really can do some amazing things. Um, this is something for a new, a new science building in New York. But the, the resolution of these is really very, very compelling. So you, you can really start to cross the line between, between art, technology, science, and digital signage. <coughs> This is a room that's under construction right now in uh, the New York Stock Exchange. And basically, they're calling it the WOW Room, so we're flattered. Uh, these are all seamless plasmas. And this is going to be their cool, high-tech conference room of the future. So there's actually a multi-touch glass table in the middle of the room that's made up of one giant screen. 
and this is where they they going to do their big big pitches. And so we've we've created this basically this room that can become a presentation center, but we've also created some very cool content because if you look at the if you look at the canvas, it's it's incredibly wide and panoramic. So we invented this camera rig of uh, three, uh, in this case, they're digital SLRs that are running in the, in the video mode. We're stacking them, but they're actually basically creating a 180-degree camera view. So we're capturing content for them right, right at this moment that will basically be mapped on, this, on these screens in the conference room. So you will, in fact, create almost a, a virtual reality conference room. So we had a lot of fun. We got to close down Wall Street uh, for a couple days. We got a 180-foot crane and lifted the camera rig, and then we threw another HD camera on the bottom of it for the heck of it. And we just sort of lifted this crane for these very cool, you know, revealing shots of the stock exchange. And then we put it in the bottom the back of a pickup truck, and I got to drive through Times Square at five miles an hour with everyone beeping at me so we could shoot our, uh, uh, our panoramic world. Um, this is another interesting project where um, this building over here is four times square. And when it was built, it was during the Times Square revitalization. And one of the regulations was to keep in the spirit of Times Square, it had to allow for electronic signage somewhere on the building. And they actually gave it the electronic rights for the top of the building. So we're currently working on, on basically proposals of how we're going to treat the top of that building. So it'll be the only building in New York City that actually will be electronic. Um, and we're expecting actually a lot of flack because it's going to be you know, fairly controversial when it happens. Um, but what's cool about it is you can see the top of this building from New Jersey. This is a shot from New Jersey and from, from four boroughs. So it's, it's way up there. So this is just a superstructure. The screen actually will be, will be much wider when it goes up. Um, we worked on the China Pavilion at the, uh, at the Shanghai World's Fair last year. If you talk about dysfunction, you know, dealing with 40 people that are part of this committee, including two people from the propaganda ministry, and, and this, is, this actually was a piece for uh, the Republic of China. So it was a very, very bizarre politics, but we did 90% of our meetings via video Skype. So I did a couple, a couple trips to Shanghai, but most of the work was really done over Skype, and that was, that was transformative to me. I, you know, I've been involved in video conferencing for, since the early days of PictureTel, but the quality's gotten so good and become so um, easy to deal with that it really allowed us to, to do something remotely and be, and, and be as virtual as, as, as I've ever been. But it was kind of a cool space. We uh, created this very interesting environment. Um, that's the main screen. This is one of the corners. But we actually had these mirrored walls that came out. So the mirror walls com come out from the sides or from the ceiling. And have you ever been in a, a bathroom with a lot of mirrors on the side and you have that infinity effect? So it created this kind of apartment building of the future that as far as the eye could see, it was infinity in that direction and, and in this direction. So it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, one of the coolest things, this is sort of the, the, the final moment of the piece, but as everyone came into this theater, this show only ran three minutes, and they had 350 people per show with one and a half minutes in between. So it was really like a real conveyor belt. But as everyone walked through the ticket line, their picture was taken um, uh, unknowns to them. And through some software, um, we were actually able to insert their picture into the final 30 seconds of the video. And I think we'll just show you a quick little clip of what happens. <laughs> well, it, 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 but it was, it was surprisingly easier to do than I ever would have imagined. Um, That's 350 people? Yeah, well, I think so. I think we might have duplicated some, whatever. But we're doing the same thing. We're actually working on the new, the new Bush Library. It's going to have a big multimedia experience, something like that. But just fun things where people are like, um, there's just another, another thing we did also very similar for, a, for a, actually it was for a big meeting. Um, and this we had a day to do the processing, but we photographed everyone during registration and basically had their faces come together to form the company logo at the end of the piece. Did you work on any of the other country uh, for the World Fair? No, just, just, just China. And that was, 
that was a handful. That, that, al that almost killed us. They were, <laughs> they were, they were very difficult. You know, th and you know, it's, it's just, just, it's, it's. We sort of knew it going in, but literally, you would spec some equipment, and whatever you spec, they'd come up with their own solution. You know, or they'd try to take apart like our software to figure out how to do it themselves. It was, it was, it was you know, it was very comical times. Um, this is basically a product called microtiles. Microtiles, I think, are about 12 by 17 inches. Um, and basically, they're high-resolution little HD panels that are meant to be put together the same way you would put video walls together back in the old days. But they're kind of clip and plug and play. But they have very, very high resolution. So it gives you a lot of creativity in terms of how do you create a different shape canvas. You know, And back to my point that there's just too many damn square or rectangular screens in our lives. You know, there are plasma screens at home and computer screens at our desks and you know, square screens on our phones. But anything we can do to create something that's a little bit of a different shape tends to be a little more compelling for, for a viewer. So these are, so I'm sorry, they're, they're 12 by 16, but very, very cool in terms of what, what, what things you can do with them. But also very, very high resolution. I'm a resolution freak. Um, did all of you have a chance to listen to um, their invitation on the headphones? Yeah. Um, very cool technology that's been around a long time was this. These are actually called uh, binaural heads. And they're originally uh, designed for critical listening or, and also hearing protection. So they actually created an anatomically correct microphone that looks like a human head. It's filled with material similar to what's in our heads, you know, basically, you know, brain and bone. And and they created anatomically correct um, ear canals. So in fact, the way we listen to sound, we don't have two little microphones sitting out over here. We're actually hearing some sound, you know, through our, you know, through our gelatinous uh, brain mass. We're hearing some sounds directly down the tube, but they're bouncing around a little bit. So if you take this microphone out to the New York Stock Exchange, or out to a trauma unit at, at, a, at a hospital, and you just record stereo and play it back through headphones, that's really what, what you listen to, is just this very, very cool um, dimensional sound, much more dimensional than you know 5.1 or 7.1 audio. Um, and speaking of audio, you know, audio tends to be the stepchild of video in everything we do. It's usually the first thing that goes off our budgets, you know, if there's any um, budget resistance. Well, we'll just cut out the original soundtrack, we'll drop in some needle drop music. But audio is the most powerful emotional tool we have, and so we're always trying to say, you know what, let's start with audio. And then we'll, let's see what we can do with picture, because I think without audio, pieces don't have emotion. And I'm, I'm a big uh, um, missionary salesman on that. We've done a lot, of, a lot of trade shows for pharmaceutical companies where literally people come in, get their free earbuds, plug into a soundbar, and just listen to an audio soundscape, you know, very similar to what you heard. Um, this is something else we did. We created a theater, you know, with a combination of this was in the early days of HD when there really wasn't any HD out in the trade show world. But we we created like concierge level learning. So we we had these very cool sort of futuristic chaise lounges. We had individual high def monitors. We put on Bose noise canceling headphones. Created one of those binaural soundtracks, and people sat there for 14 minutes without, you know, looking at their clock watches or going through their collateral or nudging each other. So it just really speaks to the, just to the power of the, the power of audio, and, and this in this case was a high resolution image. Um, this is a very cool technology. I have a little demo for. It's you know it's come out of the labs of MIT. It's a little. It, it has some limitations, but it gives you the ability. Once let me just boot this up to the same way laser laser beams direct light in a very uh, tight collimated form. This allows you to actually project audio in the same way. So theoretically, you can have someone two or three hundred feet away. You can point the sound disc at them, and only the person that you're actually pointing the sound disc at, sound disc at can hear you. So yeah, it's really. Change that. <laughs> yeah. But imagine b imagine doing it doing an annual meeting or, or big sales conference, and while people are sitting in the audience in the beginning, they're literally hearing these voices in their head. Maybe it's what, you know, what clients are saying about them. Maybe it's about the competition. Hey, this can't be real good. <laughs> um, but, you know, think of it as a theatrical tool that I think could be very, very cool. You know, just speaking of the power of audio and, and trying to rethink audio a little bit, if I leave you with anything today, it's like, you know, do the opposite of what everyone expects. And this is just how we, we used it at, at a trade show. We actually, you know, had these very cool, um, little stories about cancer survivors for Bristol-Myers Squibb. 
and you'd walk up to this plasma screen, and it would have this, you know, this really nice, intimate story, but it was, almost, it, was, it was almost too private to really just broadcast it. So you actually walked into this cone of sound, and you got to learn a little bit about this, this person in a very quiet, intimate way, which, which I love. Everyone's presenting in a square, you know, be round. Um, this is actually a larger, for those of you that saw the little mini that's down the hallway, this is the, the full-scale version that, that you know, Bob, my colleague in the corner, is, is the master of and went to Germany to, to learn how it's built and constructed and how to program it. But it's as close to a holographic-like solution as I've seen. It's not a hologram, but it's holographic-like in that you basically can, can map video and text around this see-through column. The center of it is hollow, so in fact you can put three-dimensional objects in it. But a very, 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 very cool, you know, digital kiosk of the future. It's cool stuff. Yeah. And that's the mini that we took a look at a little while ago. So I'm just going to whip through these quickly. You can't quite tell here, but there's a flower vase in the center of it. And then we've been talking with with, with some of the casino industry. We've been out to we've been out to. Las Vegas a few times and talking about virtual, you know, virtual dealers, etc. Right. But even, you know, in the old days you do video walls or multi, I'm a, I'm a, we'll talk about multi-source in a little bit, but imagine just at a difference, this, at a distance, this was, you know, some, you know, computer technology show. I think it was a company that I think did quality testing of circuit boards. But, but from 300 yards away you would see this this experience happening with these round screens and basically had people talking to each other, it was interactive, but it was so compelling at a distance that it pulled people together and it was just as simple as really, really being round. Um, and even a simple PowerPoint presentation, sometimes just something round with a well-designed kiosk and armature, just gets people to pay a little more interest to it. Once again, the content really has to be thought about. You can't take a square piece and put on a round screen and, you know, you don't want to have too much text on it, but just very, very simple applications. We have back at our shop, we have a, you know, an Apple, you know, an Apple screen like the one you saw in the oval in the hallway that just, just cut into that shape, but very, very cool and at a distance, things that people haven't seen before. And this just a side of the oval. This is a, a, a big installation we did for uh, Novartis for the uh, American Heart Association's conference. The statue in the middle actually is on a motor and we designed it in a way, I'm gonna, actually I'll come back to that in a second. Um, this was a device similar to what you saw in the hallway. This is a, this is a full scale, uh, like eight foot version. This one is not see-through, but we've been using it with virtual presenters. So in fact, we actually have a, you know, someone that kind of talks you through and instead of having a live presenter there, there's something kind of cool. It's, it's kind of like a Star Trek transporter tube a little bit. Uh, but they don't take bathroom breaks, and they can go every 15 minutes. <laughs> and once again, at a different, at a, dis yeah, at a distance, it can look very cool. Now, this technology has been out for a while, and then, but, but most of the applications, people just sort of take video and try to wrap around it, and it just doesn't seem to work. So sometimes you have to tailor the content. And a lot of people think of us as hardware people. We really, you know, came out of the content uh, creation world. And you know, I think what makes us special really is creating custom content that'll work with the technologies instead of like here's here's this cool gimmick let's just take our tv ad and slap it on it it doesn't always work that way you know and sometimes you want to you want to certainly definitely um leverage those assets that you have um but sometimes you have to sort of repackage how they're going to be used um, some very cool new curved panoramic players uh, this is a piece i told some of you about from macy's and, and this was macy's we you know, worked on a piece for macy's that they spent you know about three million dollars when they first bought up Bloomingdale's and all the big companies, they wanted a big splash. And this was actually something that you saw as you came up the elevator to the main, in the main banquet room. But bang for the buck, this got more attention and more wow than this huge thing we'll, we'll talk about in a few minutes. But it was it's literally a rear projection screen hanging in space, a commodity projector, you know, playing off a computer screen. Um, and in this case, we took their... Um, we just took a, one of their catalogs and literally scanned in, you know, a couple hundred pictures and we created a loop <laughs> for, you know, for a, second, for a second day's worth of content. The, the other day was actually just everyone's face who was going to the conference, similarly, was sort of projected on that screen for a nanosecond. Everyone's static move. This is that piece from Novartis. And as the statue rotates, 
One projector dims, the other projector picks it up. So from across the trade show floor, it was definitely, it was the beacon. It really was the star. And it really got everyone there to pay attention. Um, this is a very cool technology. Um, it's a robotic uh, rotating plasmas, or LCDs. But the software keeps the perspective <laughs> wherever you want it to be. And then this is even a more playful one where each screen can be programmed to do whatever you want it to do. In this case, we're, 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 giving, we're giving gravity uh, a little bit of visualization. <laughs> and something, something for Audi. What's, what's the old joke? In the, if you can't make it good, make it big. <laughs> um, so this is just an example. These are just two like 14 by 14 foot screens uh, for another, another medical show where in fact, the, you know, all three screens, you know, interact with each other to tell a very simple story. I would never understood the story. I think the agency didn't know what they were doing, but <laughs> somehow it seemed, you know, it seemed, it seemed clean and simple and elegant. Um, and this is, this is part of that same uh, Macy's annual meeting. In this case, we created a, uh, each of these screens that you see is 30 feet by 100 feet. And we had seven of those, so we had a, an image that was 700 feet by 30 feet. And in this case, in the morning they came in for breakfast, and it was a basically a beautiful tropical island. All the water is lapping up on the uh, on the sand. And there's a little Macy's airplane that flies around the <laughs> circumference, you know, pulling the Macy's banner. Um, they came into the evening. They had a cocktail party before their banquet, and we created this canvas of all the old Macy's stores for a uh, interesting panorama. The next morning they came in. It was a Vernal Wood, um, but it was very close. Re really creating a virtual reality environment for about 2,500 people. And then we had, uh, I think, the Gladys Knight and the Pips for a big party at the end. Um, and this was, this was a totally different hall. We actually created this, this very huge structural piece. And actually, it has you know, uh, six video screens on it. And this entire uh, uh, massive piece will actually lower down. And people would actually ent enter the stage from below, and they would sort of be revealed. So it would come down. Next thing you know, it would reveal you know, Terry Lundgren, their CEO, and then it would drop down and they'd reveal their, you know, CFO, whatever. It was a, a massive undertaking, but um, those days are gone, so, you know, for, especially for Macy's. This is a cool gadget. This is a helium, a helium balloon that has video projectors and integrated video screens in it. You come to your trade show, it comes in a big canvas bag. You, we know the price of helium now, which is very expensive, but you, uh, you fill this thing up with helium, it lifts off the ground, you feed it a video signal and power, and you literally get a self-contained floating video screen with you know no no rigging, you know no issues. Um, works pretty you know works mostly indoors or at nighttime. You can take it outdoors, but it's not it's not that great in in, in high ambient lighting situations. Um, stereoscopic 3D. I hope most of you had a chance to take a look at the uh, 3D with active glasses. Uh, we'll talk about the non the non glasses version in a second. But we have found for the moment um, that that. 3D, there's a, there's a big buzz to it that seven people are 75% more receptive to watching a presentation that's 3D. Um, that, that, you know, I think that will, will wane and, and ebb. There's still a lot of very bad 3D content out there. There's a lot of people trying to do this in your face. I'm, I'm, we're much more of a believer of using 3D for, for depth within and the subtlety. I think Avatar did a better job of that than you know, a lot of other 3D pieces we've seen. But certainly stereoscopic 3D is quite a buzz. Um, been very impressed with uh, just even the laptop version, where you can do something fairly small, but very, very high quality. And, and if the content's done right, it really can, you really can learn more about an object or a product or an experience than you can, I think, with a, with a, with a non-3D uh, version. But it's, it's still a little dangerous, can be a gimmick, and I think it's overused a little bit. Um, so we've been using a lot of medical shows. But what's interesting is, you know, and this was a tiny 20 by 20 booth, but we had people standing in, in the aisles. I mean, this is, this is common space right here um, just, just to, to take a look at it. And that's, you know, we were all hoping for that. And then you get yelled at because you're not supposed to be standing in the aisles. <laughs> um, but, you. but you just look at, you know, you look at people's reactions and just their concentration. And that's, that's what we're all striving for, whether it's through stereoscopic 3D or some other technology. It's using advanced and, you know, and emerging technology in the service of storytelling. So 3D without glasses, and, and Bob has a the prototype in the other room, uh, which is set up. This is a new panel for us. It still needs a little bit of tweaking, but I think if you get it a few minutes before you leave, 
you, you get a sense in, in some of the sequences of how you can have 3D without glasses. We're creating some new customized content for it because we're not in love with the, the, the content that other people have been doing. Can you use a parallax screen? Yep. Kind of like with Nintendo? Yep, yep. Um, <coughs> uh, that's how many views are on the screen, Bob? The, uh, that's a 28. 28 view. So 3D without glasses, I, it's almost ready, you know. Bob's going down to New York on Tuesday. We're looking at a, a new prototype. I'm, I'm hoping to come back with something a little sexier, but we're, we're almost there. We've been, Bob and I have been in that space for about two years now and seen every, every product that's out there and been at every show. And we're, we think, we think we're on the cusp, but I'm still, I'm, I'm not, I have to be wowed before I, you know, we were talking earlier, if you don't love it, you, you can't, you can't convince people to, uh, to buy into it. And I, I certainly wouldn't want them to. Uh, and there's actually a 3D auto stereo video wall, and that's, the video walls are actually very impressive. That will hopefully be out this spring, and I think that's actually going to be the real, the real killer app for auto stereo for the moment. It's, it needs to be big for, in order for it to work pretty well. Um, you can do 3D on the same type of screen material you saw down the hallway in the oval screen. Actually will hold stereoscopic imagery. Um, very bright, very crisp, but the beauty of that also is you can cut into any shape you want, and I think that's still very compelling for a lot of folks. Uh, here's more, more medical applications. But um, I mean, this is one of those things like just this cool screen, it's very sculptural with a cool base. You know, we had people driving the, the forklifts and pickup trucks, stop the trucks and come over and say, wow, that's really cool. You know, and that's, we sort of live for that. You know, you live for sophisticated viewers thinking it's cool, but basically the world thinking it's cool. And they make some very, very large versions. And this was actually, with, there's a new, uh, a new tourist attraction in Philly called Lights of Liberty. And inside, I don't have any great pictures at the moment, but basically it's a 360 degree 3D stereoscopic experience that tells the story of the, story of, the uh, uh, of the revolution. And the kiosk, I think many of you took a look at, if you haven't, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's like kind of a view master on steroids. Um, and literally, there's a camera. You know, I call it the Cyclops camera. With it's got three lenses, um, and but it basically is producing its imagery on instead of a 35 millimeter slide. You know, and I think a ViewMaster is like one quarter of a 35 millimeter slide. It's it's a big two and a quarter by two and a quarter inch transparency, like a Hasselblad style 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 for those of you who are photographers. But very very high resolution where you really believe that those people are there, and I think that can that can be very compelling. So. Uh, we have one project on hold at the moment, but literally it's, it's patients, and basically there'll, there'll be a patient portrait, and then there'll be text on another plane, sort of just you know, giving, giving a little bit of a testimonial of their either disease state problem or uh, post-drug therapy experiences. But just going back to this, this what's, what's intriguing about this is, uh, you know, to my point about open inviting earlier, it's like it's like a, a, a construction site where there's a little hole in the in the wood wall of the construction site, and everyone wants to peek into it. Sometimes you can make things very precious and not public. It draws people in as opposed to you know people. Sometimes if people can see everything, they stand at the corner and look at it, and then kind of wander off. And these are technologies that I think also can be used in conjunction with a big event. So you have all this downtime, you have all this like waiting to go into the grand ballroom, and you have all these breakout sessions. And imagine just peppering some of this technology throughout that experience so it isn't just about that come in the theater, that one big buzz. It's kind of there's, there's, a, there's some consistent wowing of folks throughout the um, longevity of the experience. Use light in unique ways. I think some of you saw the electroluminescent panels. You know, think of it as a flat, flexible uh, light box. Um, it needs a transparency material on top of it. But what's very cool is, is embedding it in the floor, letting it cycle, letting it guide people. And here's how we use it in some, in some another pharmaceutical show. Um, and here's just, you know, th doing the opposite of what else is doing. In this case, you know, no one, no one, everyone's always putting things on the walls. No one's thinking of the floor and the ceiling. So in this case, we put our, our um, LED screen on, on the roof and created this blood flow animation. So it really created this wonderful canopy. And these are some of these new uh, mesh LED screens. So in fact, they're fairly lightweight. So you can actually get away with you know hanging hanging them pretty easily without uh, you know making it a, a four ton experience. You can go wide. So we're doing, doing a lot of perimeter installations where we're using a sort of a wide aspect ratio or panoramic aspect ratio. This is something for Covidian's new lobby and corporate headquarters. 
And then it's also a very interesting palette to create content with, you know, in terms of, of really working with that panoramic, you know, 180 degree view of the world. And this is actually a camera rig that we, we built a number of years ago for, um, also for Comcast. So we shot sunrise at the easternmost point of the United States and sunset at Big Sur, which is the westernmost point of the United States. Um, and, and really had a lot of fun shooting 180 degree, you know, HD, HD imagery. So here's something I shot for the, uh, the Phillies in the playoff games. And doing a lot of meetings, you know, the, the wide canvas has become a lot more popular. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you something, some, some cool stuff in a little bit. Um, I'm a big believer also in using that interstitial time when people are sort of coming into the hall. What can you do with that time? You know, in, in the same way movie theaters are using that, that warm up period, it used to be trivia, you know, trivia questions and trivia quizzes. But everyone kind of gets engaged, so I'm trying to take a look at the whole event experience and say, you know, we have that 10 or 15 minutes as people are, you know, um, slowly coming in. What can you do with that? What can you do to make that sort of compelling? So sometimes we, you know, inspirational quotes. We had one thing for a McAfee uh, software where we'd bring up a quote, but we wouldn't uh, attribute it to anyone for a couple seconds. So you wouldn't think, wait a minute, I can do anything. You know, who is that going to be? You know, is it going to be, you know, Edison or something like that? And it's Janis Joplin or, you know, usually a little, little bit of a disconnect between what's up there and, and, and who the author was. But um, there's a whole new generation of these new um, super panoramic uh, L LCD screens, which I think is kind of cool. If everyone else is doing a regular screen, having something that's very, very panoramic is compelling. And the power of multiple storytelling. I think sometimes a lot of screens, right now, um, multitasking has become you know, common to all of us. We're on our Blackberries, we're, you know, we're watching television, we're you know, looking at emails, we're you know, doing a lot of things at the same time. But also I think we've all discovered that you can take in a lot more information than, than people realize. And you don't have to create a story that just has one screen you know, that cuts to the next image, the next image. So, uh, TV series like the show 24, when they start to do a lot of multi-screen parallel storytelling, you really could could enhance the story by showing it from a lot of different people's perspectives. And there's a bunch of movies that that pioneer that effect, like like Woodstock and the Thomas Crown effect. But we've sort of been known for a lot of the presentations we've done. We're actually using multiple screens synced together to tell a story, especially more quickly and more efficiently you could, than you could do linearly. So this is a piece on, on schizophrenia. I'm an expert in schizophrenia now. <laughs> but here's just something here. This was a, this was a key opinion leader you know, speaking on some clinical data. But instead of having to cut to you know, the graphic that he's, he's referring to, you can use these different screens and you basically get the whole effect. You, know? you put up his title on one screen, his graphic on another screen. Um, and you can actually tell the story a lot quicker and I think a lot more efficiently. And this is a map, map projection where actually we had three odd shaped screens. We're actually mapping video onto these screens and making sure it's, you know, it's all in focus, which is a little bit of a, a morphing trick. And then just, your, just your, your combination of screens in terms of creating things that maybe are more sculptural as storytelling devices. And this is a piece we did where uh, it was for a, a uh, I think the Melkor, which was the pulse oximeters, you know, that you always see people wear in the hospital that tells your, um, the, oxida the oxygen level in, you know, in your blood. And they actually, their spokesperson was the, you know, uh, uh, Brashear is the famous Everest climber. So we actually built this little, little mountain of plasma screens. <coughs> and this, this is some of this rear projection material, just we created this portal, you know, back to the point of open and inviting, we actually like to create a pathway. Here's, Here's the entrance to the booth. Come here, do this, then do that, and, and try, to, try, to, you know, try to make it cool at the same time. Most importantly, you've got to make the interaction compelling. So when we, when, you know, when we do interactive, sometimes we'd like to try to, how are we going to make the interactive look like something maybe they couldn't do uh, at home? So in this case, we've used some of that same uh, rear projection material. So the projectors are buried in the floor. We used gyro mouses in those days as some gesturing technology to actually control the interactive application. But just at a distance, things just look, look interesting. And if things look interesting, you have more, more opportunity to, to capture that person's attention and not have them just walk by. Um, very, you know, very simple things of, of uh, even just doing your uh, data entry. Uh, if someone's registering for a booth, they make these small little 
basically laser projected keyboards. No big deal, it's sort of a commodity. But it makes it a little more playful, playful for people to interact with. But also it speaks something about the innovation of the company. You know, there's, there's, a, there's that subtle thing, hmm, we're not doing things the same way every, every, everyone else is doing. And it becomes like, gee, I want to I wanna put my dad in because I've never worked with something like that before. Some gesturing technologies, you know, we've done quite a bit of over the years. This is a, f a fun gadget we're using for a product launch coming up, but literally it's from Finland and it creates this layer of atomized water, but it's so finely atomized it's actually dry to the touch. And you can project video and, and imagery and signage on it. So we're using it as an entrance to this, this big event, so everyone's going to have to walk through this sort of, this, this column of, of imagery. And they have sort of an interactive version. And they used it at uh, the Wired NextFest conference. These are very cool. I don't know if you've ever seen water screens. Uh, imagine a dot matrix printer that's actually able to spit out little water drops in, in a very controlled fashion. So it actually creates words, pictures, images. Here we go. Liquid, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Seems to be good for blue waves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you probably won't drown in it. But just playful and just yeah. really cool. Um, using technology to look more closely at things. You know, everyone thinks their product often is ugly. You know, we've done a lot of stuff for Cisco routers and pill bottles, etc. There's a technology we've been using for many years. It's a, it's a special lens. But basically, it's a lens, and you've seen it. You've, you've seen it in a lot of commercials. You might not have recognized it, but when Apple comes up with a new product, they'll sometimes fly over the back of it. It makes it almost feel like, you know, the, the back of the computer is is an aircraft carrier. Mm -hmm. But it gives you perfect. Everything stays in focus. There's you know a lot of art in terms of how we light it uh, and how we shoot it. But it can it can make very ordinary things look extraordinary. Here's just a quick quick little demo of some. But rather than creating a 3D model of everything, <coughs> so I, for iRobot, you know, we, we actually got a sheet of glass and shot from underneath it. But you can make a lot of objects look like a hero. So we've been going to a lot of companies and literally saying, you know what, let's, let's, if we're going to go to the expense of setting up the studio to shoot your product, let's bring in every product and we'll shoot every single product you have and then make those available to your sales force and everyone else and do it once a year. But it's, it's a wonderful, it's a really a wonderful gadget that, that has a lot of wow factor to it. create little landscapes of objects. Okay, we're, we're in the home stretch. But even, you know, computers are probably about the ugliest thing you can probably shoot. But we use this lens to try to try to make it a little more compelling. This is back in the non-HD days. I look at I look at non-HD footage now and I cringe, you know, because I'm I've gotten so spoiled. Even just something like a pill bottle, where you can just basically try to make that look a little sexier, and people tend to, people tend to love. You know, if their products can look like heroes, mm. it's good for everyone. We've been doing a lot of iPad apps. This is something we're involved with for Philips, where every Philips healthcare rep now has a now has an iPad, and literally all their content is downloaded and upgrade up, updated dynamically every week. So anything that's out of date is taken off. Anything that's new is substituted. But basically, it allows each of the reps to either share their presentations or share the, or customize their presentations with every single bit of collateral, video, and animation that's available to them. And I was talking to some of you earlier. I, I've never seen anyone turn this down a bit. A, really adapt technology faster than the iPad, you know, and and. and uh, it, you know, there's just something about the form factor, its brightness, its battery power, etc. 
that's really taken a lot of my clients by storm, and not, and not just for the gimmickry of it, but the fact of the usability. You know, you tend not to share an image on your screen because you've got to tilt it and move it and change it, and it's sort of bulky, and you have to be at the right angle. There's something about this where it's like, hey, take a look at this. You know, we've been going out to presentations and handing out five or six of them to folks and move along with us in terms of the presentation. Um, but I, iPads mm. really blowing me away these days, and we've been we've been using it, uh, especially in the, especially in the medical mm. world, has embraced it very very quickly. So we've created a lot of customized apps for that. But just there's something about that interaction with someone, and, and same sort of thing. Try to combine it with the Bose noise canceling headphones and a little bit of a dimensional sound. And all of a sudden, you have people that will just sit there and listen to your story the whole time, without you know that two minute kind of look and then walk away. And uh, many of you familiar with augmented reality? And so I've been doing, doing a lot of, lot, of, lot of that these days. The same sort of thing for Philips, where you really can't bring a lot of these objects there. So I'm going to skip through. I'm almost, almost done, but I want one or two more things to show you. But. And then just by, I'm going to leave you just with kind of my, my, my wows of the month. So these are just the stuff that we're most involved with lately. This is a little panel I'll show you in a second. Um, let me just let me back off for a second. Uh, every LCD screen, you know, like, like this one. In fact, oh, let me just squeeze it for a second. Hello, come on. <coughs> come on. Basically is a piece of glass with an LCD panel embedded in it. And it has a backlight. Usually it's a fluorescent light or, or an LED light. What people have been doing now is, and I'll, I'll demo this just when we're done, but we have some new products that basically take, take your initial panel and you basically create a little light box, like a little diorama here. You need a lot of light behind it. But in fact, that's how these boxes were done. So they're kind of like a see-through LCD panel. So we're going to look at some content, and then before, before we're done, maybe we'll play with it just as a, as a final aside. But so basically, you create this little diorama. You can put some three-dimensional objects in it, and basically design your content so that uh, you have a lot of whites in it, in which case white becomes sort of see-through. But imagine taking your product or taking something iconic inside this little box And it's really, you know, it really is an attention to get it from a distance. Very, very cool. So we're, we're heavily involved with this at the moment. And, you know, refrigerator doors. Mm. And then this is a friend of mine that has a very cool little spinning sign that, you know, it's an old LED gimmick you've seen for a while, but now there's like, you know, it's like, was it like eight feet across, Bob? Something like that. It's, it, it's not quite eight. Yeah, but it's just just a very very cool gimmickry. And then this is taking one of the wow screens, like you saw in the hallway, just cutting it into a shape, and just really projecting you know projecting our presenter on it. That's and, kind of freaky. And giving a pre <laughs> giving a presentation. <laughs> uh, and this is just a new generation of actually round round LED products. So actually creating a round screen out of LEDs, so it's big and bright. Um, and you know, f fairly easy to, to, to deliver to an event without having to do something very custom. And this is this is actually something very cool called um, map projection that we're doing some projects with. So you literally take a building. This is down in uh, Sugarland, Texas. You map the building itself. This is like their local courthouse with lasers, and you actually create content that is meant to go onto that shape. So literally, you have you know four or five projectors that are that are all you know, aligned out out in the environment. But just take a look at some of this uh, this content coming up. It's really <coughs> and I meant to have. There's been doing. There's there's a really nice sample of something I consulted with for actually it was for a big uh, annual meeting. Where they created some shapes on stage and did the map projection onto that. So this 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 how, blows how my. How tall is that? It's pretty yeah, big. You know, 80, 80 feet, or probably 80 feet. probably 100 plus feet to the, maybe even higher to the steeple. Mm. 
not the, not the greatest video, but they've yet to send me the higher one. But just very, very cool, clever stuff, you know. And you know, just imagine the audience, just the kind of the smiles and the giggles and everything else that goes with it. So this is actually for New Year's, so this is how they kicked off New Year's. So we have, we have about 40 seconds left, but... Where was this? This is Sugarland, Texas. Sugarland, Texas. But just, I think, just brilliant. I really think they just did. And I've, and I've seen a, you know, a bunch of these. It's, it's become you know, a, little more, a little more commonplace. You know, I'd rather be here than Times Square when you know when you think about it. <laughs> really, that's that's pretty cool. And, you know, combined with live fireworks and everything else. So I'll I'll I think I'll I'll leave you with Happy New Year. <laughs> and the world still the world the thing, and we all you know we we're all children at heart. We all need to be wowed more, and there, there there should be more wow in the world. Not to be not to be self serving, but I think we're all in in terms of aspiring of, of of what we can do for our clients, and in terms of communications, I think we have to all work harder each day to exceed people's expectations because it, it's, it is harder and harder and mm -hmm. so much of what we do can so, it can be expensive to begin with and then it can be lost, you know, it can be lost in the noise of, of what's out there. So some of that's good, you know, some of it's bad. Sometimes the, the, the more noise the better for some folks. Um, but I, I, do, I do strongly believe in storytelling and I hope we can, we can combine all those elements to, to you know, tell stories that are remembered and wow people at the same time and, and have a good time doing it. So thank you much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.